I had no idea what to expect from Jamie Lee. She enters the room and brings the power of positivity like no one else. A ball of fire, on set early, there to connect with every collaborator, there to do the best job that she can and, uh, and, and, and really bring 100% from a fight scene to a dramatic scene to a scream scene. It's just a blast to work with Jamie Lee. Stylistically, we use John Carpenter's 1978 film as our creative foundation. That's, we're a sequel to that and no one else uh, is the way that we looked at it. And so stylistically, we tried to approach it very in honor of that. And t to be able to go to these heightened places of terror, we wanted to establish a very relatable sense of drama and these characters to put them in an everyday world that we all recognize and is not extraordinary. And then let's add the intensity and intimacy of a man with a knife in your house trying to kill you. Our approach required ethically John's signature. John to say, thumbs up, let's go, I'm gonna be a part of this. If we were going to be as authentic and honorable to his 1978 movie as we were saying we were, we had to have his blessing. And then once, once he was on board, it was time for the next challenge of the conversation is to convince him to do the score. The sound of Halloween is so iconic, but for me to have his signature, not only as an executive producer and a collaborator on the creation of the narrative and the casting and the sculpting of the production, but icing on the cake would be a John Carpenter score. Lori spent 40 years preparing for the return of Michael Myers. Lori has gone through every worst case scenario in her head, and she actually doesn't dread his release, she, she wants it, she craves it. She needs that cathartic release. And so we meet a woman that's kind of hair unraveled and, uh, and is an emotional wreck as she's gone through these scenarios in her head, as she's rehearsed every possible outcome, as she's really prepared to greet him again. And we don't know what this loose cannon has to offer, but we can't wait to find out. Lori wants to, wants to face her demon eye to eye and, and have it her way. She wants to end her own story rather than have her story ended for her. First time I watched Halloween as a kid, I was 12 years old at uh, my friend's slumber party. It was his birthday party, and my parents had forbidden me from watching Revenge of the Nerds and Halloween, two movies that I really wanted to see. We put on Halloween, and... I, I'm pretty sure I made it through the whole movie. My recollection's a little foggy because I was so traumatized. But then I, I got ill and barfed and called my mom to come get me. That was my introduction to what would later become one of the cinematic loves of my life. Buffalo Bill's famous dance scene in The Silence of the Lambs wasn't in the script of the film though it was in the book. Ted Levine, the actor who played Bill, was insistent that the scene be included to help the audience understand the demented character better. Thanks, Ted. We'll never be able to hear Goodbye Horses by Q Lazarus the same again. Hmm?